Hey everybody, Ron Metzger's here again. About seven or eight years ago, when I first started collecting meteorites, I was lucky enough to purchase this piece of Odessa, which is around 700 grams. When I first got it, the surface was a little bit rusty, so I cleaned it up. When I did that, the Widman Sutton pattern kind of faded out. So lately, I've been doing some re-etching with ferrochloride on some of my other slices, and the results have been pretty good. It's easy to do. I have all the equipment that I need. So I thought I would give this another surface finish to bring out the Whitman Sutton pattern, maybe improve its looks a little bit. It does have a little bit of a coating on it to protect it from rusting. As you can see, it's nice and clean. It's a good, smooth surface. Uh, so let's see what happens. So my original plan for this piece was just to etch it. Now, I did that, and it came out beautiful. At least under fluorescent light indoors, it looked beautiful. I took it outside, and I took some photos. Once I took a hard look at it, I noticed some rust spots still evident. So I have to take care of these. Now, the first one I saw was up in the left-hand corner. Uh, there's another one in those two grains right there. Hard to see, but it's there. There's one on the tip down there. Down at the bottom down here, there's quite a bit. And then there's a little tiny dot right there. These have to be dealt with. Otherwise, if I go ahead and just coat this, they'll be trapped inside and they'll eat the meteorite away from the inside. So I have to put this back in the electrolysis tank and process it uh, for a while. I'm guessing about a week. So here we go. I'm setting up to do the electrolysis for the Odessa meteorite now. This is pretty typical of this kind of operation. So I start with a plastic tub. I have two graphite plates that act as the anodes. The Rebar is used to suspend the meteorite in the water that will be down here. That will be the electrolyte. This is you go from negative to positive. That's how the system works. I have a DC power supply that I run around uh, 12 volts and 1 amp. I use iron wire to wrap around the meteorite to hang it from the, from the rebar. Um, you don't want to use anything but iron. If you use something like stainless, you'll end up creating hexavalent chromium in the solution. Highly carcinogenic, I don't recommend that. Now for the electrolyte, I'm using distilled water. And to create the conductivity in the water, I'm using spa pH up, which has potassium carbonate in it. So that creates a higher pH level in the water and allows electricity to travel more easily. So I think with that, we'll get this thing hooked up. We'll get the meteorite wrapped in wire, and this may take several days. Okay, I have my meteorite wrapped in iron wire. It's connected to the rebar, and it's just long enough to where it will not quite hit the bottom of that tub. I'm trying to minimize the amount of water I have to put in there. But it looks like i got to put in about four inches worth, so let's get to it. Get my water over here, and let's... Pour it in. This might take a minute. All right, water's going in. This little water can buy you for about a buck and a half for I think two gallons, so not real expensive. Okay, another inch to go. I haven't put in the, the pH up yet. It's coming next. Okay, we got about a half inch over the top. I'm going to let you know it hurt. Okay, now I'm going to turn on my power supply. I'm going to adjust it for 12 volts. It's almost there now. And let's see, 8, 9, there's 12. Okay. Now you notice there's no current being run. Of course, <laughs> I don't have it hooked up yet. So let's hook up the, the uh, cathode. And you see there's about 0.02 amps being drawn. So now I'm going to take my pH up. I'm going to add about 2 ounces. Doesn't take much. Okay, let's see here. So I've got to get my mark. There's my two ounce mark. Okay. 
So to pour it in, now you see there's a couple of amps flowing. That's the difference that the electrolyte makes. Okay, so now we're about 2.3 amps. 2.2. So now with the process started, you see there's bubbles being formed on each face of the graphite plate. And also both sides of the meteorite. So we have the process is starting. Now this is not a fast process. It takes several days, maybe several weeks. It depends on how rusty your piece is. This isn't that rusty, so I suspect it may be less than a week. So and we just gotta let it cook now. Alright, so this has been sitting for about 36 hours now. I've turned the power off so we can get a clear picture of what's happening. You can see there's a lot of flaking coming off the piece. Both sides, which means there's probably a lot of loose debris on the outside. Now the piece itself actually looking a little darker, which is, I expect that. I've seen that happen before. So we are getting progress. There's a lot of dust in the bottom down here, and that's the graphite coming off the plates, which is a normal effect of the electrolysis. But overall, looking pretty good. I'm going to let this go about a week. I don't think there's going to be all that much more rust on it. The rust was mainly inside all the little cracks in the grain. Um, that, that seemed to be the main part of it. So let's turn this back on and let her rip. And there go the bubbles. So we'll check with this in another couple of days and see how we're doing. It's been about four days now, and as you can see, there's lots of debris coming off this piece. The piece itself is looking pretty good. See a little discolored, but that's okay. That comes right off. So about three more days, and we're going to pull this thing out and then polish it up and see what happens. Alright, let's turn it back on, let it cook a few more days, and there she goes. Okay, looking good. Okay, it's been about a week now, I think it's time to remove the meteorite from the, from the electrolysis bath and see what it looks like. Power supply off, and let's take a good close look at this guy. All right, let's get this thing disconnected. Okay, negative's gone, positive's gone. And here we are. It's turned quite dark. That'll all come off of there pretty easily. So let's unwrap it and see how we do here. All right, here we go. Out of the bath, I've got myself a pair of wire cutters here. These things are miserable to unwind, so we'll just cut it. There we go. Turn it off, and of course, I'm losing more <laughs> chips. I'll put those back in there. Weigh all those, see how much weight I lost. And here's the piece. It's been burnt or something. So I'll take some light sandpaper to that and just kind of go over the face of it and see what it looks like. It's gonna I'm gonna put it in alcohol overnight to leach out any water that's gotten down into the grains. Let's get the water off of here. Oh, it's still pieces coming off of this thing. It has kind of a soapy feel. Because it's from the sodium carbonate. God, look at all the pieces coming off of this thing. Oh well, I expected that, but not this much. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> need some, definitely, definitely need some drying. Oh, it's already coming off there. Look at that. That's just a surface tarnish. But let's get some 800 grit sandpaper real quick and just take a look at it. Alright, I got some 800 grit sandpaper. I'm going to do a quick sand on it. Let's see what it looks like.
Well, it's going to be rust. All that tarnish is coming off pretty nice. That should be pretty easy to remove. I do want to get off all these pieces that are flaking, so I'll probably take a wire brush to it just to kind of get rid of all that flakiness. Yeah, that's coming off pretty good. All right, so next step, we're just going to go into an alcohol bath overnight. All right, so we've got some 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to put this in this tub here, soak the meteorite overnight. I'll cover it just a little bit. Ooh, just made it. It's completely covered. And we'll let that sit till tomorrow. And then we'll take it out of here, put it in the oven for a couple hours, dry it out. And then on to the sanding. Today I'm going to etch this piece of Odessa. It's a piece I've had for quite a while that needs to be re etched. It was a little rusty. Um, so I polished this down to an 800 grit. I'm trying to experiment today because this wasn't a very expensive piece. So it's nice and polished. And I've got all my usual uh, ferric chloride. And I'm going to neutralize that with some baking soda this time. I've been reading up on this stuff. The, the surface has been cleaned with acetone. So I got that all nice and spot free. I've got uh, some distilled water sitting here. I got my little foam paintbrush. So let's get to it. Okay, and hopefully we can see this actually develop as we go. So I got probably way too much stuff in there again. All right. I went to these foam brushes because they apply the the acid much more evenly in a controlled manner. Oh, look at that. It's already coming out. Now, the reason I took this down to 800 instead of 3,000 grit is um, some advice from Craig Zleiman. Thank you, Greg. Oh, look at this. It's already coming out. Wow, this is beautiful. I don't want to do this for more than 30 seconds. All right, let's rinse it off, see what we have. Make sure we get all the edges. Okay. Still water. My, my. I said that was a success. Look at that. Beautiful. So after I rinsed off the ferric chloride, I did a second etch. And look what happened. It became darker, more contrast. I think this is spectacular. So I think we're done with the etching. That's all we're going to do for today. The final process is to spray the meteorite with this clear coat finish. It's automotive clear coat. I've already done it. Just want to show you the results. Here is the final product after all the etching, soaking, electrolysis, everything. Came out, look at the contrast. It just jumps out at you almost, almost three-dimensional. To me, it reminds me of one of those three-dimensional hologram photos you used to see. Here, I also sprayed the back side, hopefully keep some of the moisture out of it for a while. So, we are finished. It's all done. So here's the final results of the re-etch on my Odessa. I wish I could do all of my irons this well. This just came out absolutely gorgeous. I just can't believe how nice this came out. Look at all the different reflective faces. Depending on how you hold a rock, you've got a whole different view. Light turns to dark. Dark ears go light. It depends on how you hold it and it catches the light reflection. Probably the best job I've ever done. Here's an outdoor view of the Odessa. I think you get a better picture when you're in full sunlight. 
Look at the reflection on that surface. It just, it just amazes me. Absolutely beautiful. So that's about it, folks. Enjoy.